This video shows how to merge scans of a head and shoulders. The scans shown have already had unwanted background and noise removed. Keep in mind, when merging scans, focus on the important areas first. This way, if there are alignment issues, they will show up in the less important areas of the 3D model. Here we will be merging the front scans together first and then separately merging the back. Doing the standard alignment process, I pick the noses between the eyes, under the chin, and either on the cheek or in this case a shoulder as the further the points are that you use to align usually gives a better alignment. Now after each alignment I click on the process button a couple times to make sure the fine-tune alignment is working, that the alignment is good enough for uh, fine-tuning to do auto alignment afterwards. So here I keep clicking the process button a bunch of times. Um, and I'm just waiting to see when the model starts to shift back and forth. First making sure it's moving and then seeing that it is kind of settling into position. Now I'm inspecting the model to make sure there are no double noses, that it looks like a normal face. I right click and I choose flat visible layers to merge them all together. And now I'm saving it. Now it does still have color, but when you flatten or merge the scans together, it, it turns off the rendering of color. And instead of dealing with turning all that stuff back on, I like to just close the file and reopen it. Now I'm adding on the back images. I choose the alignment tool. I click on the front one and I glue the mesh here and then I click set as base mesh. And now I am aligning behind the eyes, um, right behind the ear, and on the shoulder. And an another point. If you see points that are easy to align, pick them. And here I'm clicking process to see if it's moving back and forth. It is, and it's kind of settled into place. So. Uh, that one is done. That was a, a pretty standard, easy alignment to do. Here, the right image. It's not as easy to see the points on this one. I'm going to do behind the eyes, and I figure because I'm unsure about the points, I'm going to add two behind the eyes. And one on the shoulder, and another one on the shoulder. And we'll see how this turns out. Go to inspect it. I hit process. And it's not moving at all when I hit process. And when I inspect it, I can see I have a double shoulder there. Or these images are not lined up enough. So I'm doing the manual rough gluing where you can um, use just moving, click and drag the mouse around to turn it. Hold shift to move it forward and back and hold control to shift it around. And using those controls with the mouse I can try to uh, get the image in place. And once I feel comfortable I hit uh, store transformation and glue it and then hit process. Um, but of course that didn't work in this case so I'm trying another point based alignment choosing the shoulders, trying to be more careful to get the correct spots on the shoulders, choosing behind the eye, and a better hairline spot that's easier to um, get. And also I figure another one on the cheek just to make sure it, it pulls it in. So now I hit process. Again, it's, it's not quite doing it, but it's so close, so I'm, I'm going to try another manual align. I hold control, 
All right, it's not in the alignment tool, so I tell it to store position and then click manual align again so it gets in the tool correctly. So now I'm using control to pan it around to move it left or right or shift to zoom it, uh, bring it forward or back. And that looks better. So now I'm hitting process and there. Now, now it's catching. It's actually shifting the image back and forth and getting it into the correct position. I had to check and uncheck use false colors to have it start using the correct color information there. I checked, no double shoulders, everything looks aligned properly on this one. So now let's do the last, the back part of the model. Here is where, um, you know, this is generally simple. You choose the shoulders and then area on top of the head. You'll notice the left and right, if, if you look, it looks kind of like it's pointing out at the back more. Um, that's in the beginning I mentioned you want to align the most important areas first so that way if there is a slight alignment issue all right real quick what's happened here is sometimes the alignment in mesh labs will invert the alignment so I'm just going to do a quick uh, manual rough gluing to rotate the model to its correct position. But yeah, back to what I was saying. Um, you want to do the back first, so that way if the angle is slightly off, it, it'll be in the back and it'll be less noticeable. You know, so instead of having their nose bigger or their nose too small if you did the front last, um, you'll end up having uh, their a line uh, basically a slight bump in the back it's not really noticeable at all um, so here I aligned it manually and you'll notice the left and right are are matching up also and it's shifting into place and it shifted back and forth now it seems kind of settled so I am going to inspect the model and right away I notice the top of the head seems a little too high. Everything else with it seems aligned, it's just the top seems about an inch too high. So I'm going to hop back into the alignment tool once I confirm that's the only thing that seems to be wrong here. Um, yeah, both shoulders still look good. Okay, so back into the alignment tool, I'm going to choose the manual rough align on that one, and I'm hol holding control and just dragging it down a little. Then storing that point, closing this, now let's see if that fixed it, and that looks much better. So now I right click, I flatten visible layers, hit, hit OK. Now I'm going to do a uh, surface reconstruction, Poseidon surface reconstruction. Octree depth, I choose 8. Sample, I choose 2. That helps to smooth it out. Usually between 2 and 5 is what you need. Um, if it's too bumpy, then choose a higher number there. And so here is the completed 3D model of the head and shoulders. Even though this isn't showcasing color because the lighting conditions weren't good for the scan, um, I'm going to transfer color over to it anyways. I think it's really neat. And I'm putting search distance higher so it'll fill in any gaps. So here is the full color um, 3D model of the head and shoulders. Keep in mind that you print this up pretty small anyway, so a lot of those color defects, if your lighting isn't good, will usually not be um, visible. So yeah, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and enjoy your 3D modeling making process stuff.